This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 481. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Beachview neighborhood. And uh, we are here. We got a crew with us, first of all, over on the couch. He is, what I called you, Sir Gadget last week or something? I can't remember. Mr. Sir Gadget Bottom. Uh, <laughs> Sir Gadget Bottom. <laughs> Sir Gadget Bottom. <laughs> That's my that's my new TikTok name. John Chich- <laughs> That's a good TikTok name, actually. <laughs> Welcome to the TikTok. It is John Chichilla. Sir Gadget Bottom. Sir Gadget Bottom. How you doing? How, good. how, how is you? your gadget bottom? It is great. It, and my broom is fully standing straight up. <laughs> <laughs> you like you like your bro- you like your brooms like you like your Saturday nights <laughs> standing fully straight up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna no longer mount my brooms to the wall. I'm just gonna stand them straight up. You can have a floating broom in, in Studio C like you have your floating iMac in yes. there. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Wait a minute. Why is there an extra pair of headphones over there? What's I but so I have I have oh, I have very delicate how ears. Sir Gadget Bottom has to have special custom headphones in order very, to do this yes i have very delicate ears well, well, and can't... your headphones hurt my ears i'm sorry they're not made for every head <laughs> they're they're too hard they're, too... they're harsh <laughs> harsh oh man also with us you heard her giggling over there off to the side amanda narcissi is with us from bull hello. pittsburgh hello <laughs> queen Hi. of the brooms queen of the brooms uh, there we go I just feel bad for your wife if she like walks in later and there's like ten brooms in the kitchen. She's like, "What did you do?" So, just a science experiment with the kid. Uh, <laughs> Nothing. Uh, pay pay no attention to the brooms in the corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody puts you the broom in the corner. Make it into Blair Witch and just start like twisting them together. Oh <laughs> uh, man, how's it going? What's going on with you? Um. Everything. A little <laughs> bit of everything. Busy, a little bit of busy that. winter. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you guys. You guys have been very busy, and of course, we had the Super Bowl brunch here a couple of uh, what two Sundays ago. Wait, two Sundays ago? I don't yeah. know. They all blend oh, together. God. <laughs> God, <laughs> it was so like... long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Super Bowl brunch number three. Mm-hmm. It was fin- awesome. Fantastic. Yes, I learned about a loot crate top type service where they send you beer items. Yes. Uh, first sip box, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Valentine's Day is this weekend. Cue them. There you go. Like, yeah. Good beer the perfect, gifts. Perfect, perfect Good gift. beer gifts. Anyways, this is the Awesome Cast, uh, streaming live on Facebook and many other platforms as well as we record this. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com where you can find this and uh, past episodes and show notes and find out where to subscribe. You can find the Awesome Cast on your iTunes. Oh, not your iTunes. Well, I. But they have not updated iTunes on the PC. So for whoever's been calling me out about saying iTunes all the time, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. And, of course, you can find video versions on YouTube and Facebook. You can hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Actually, maybe not because I think that broke. Uh, you, can, you can hit us up somewhere. Uh, if that doesn't work, hit us up on Twitter at mayhem or at awesomecast. Sorry, I moved the email over to G Suites, and I think I broke all the extra emails with that domain. So we're in the process process of fixing that um also awesome cast on facebook where you can uh, catch us live again we are on many uh platforms uh, on twitter periscope youtube twitch but of course the main chat room is happening over on facebook and i was, I was talking with a fan from one of our other shows um so we do go live on those if you catch us later uh so you can join us here live and tweet us or whatever the case may be if you're not a facebook person because i know there are <gasps> some people don't facebook like at all and and that's why we're in multiple places so that we can 
provide that. Uh, at First Sip Brew Box um, is the account on social media. If you want to check that out, Steve of uh, Bold Sports is uh, throwing that in there. I get the complete plugs. I, I appreciate it because I don't know if I remember the entire name. Um, and, of course, like I said, we're here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And uh, thank you to our audio partners uh, streaming us throughout the week. Our friends at the405media.com carrying us uh, noon Eastern time on the weekdays. And our friends at Post Industrial Audio that are uh, telling the world about the Pittsburgh podcast scenes. We really do appreciate that. I'm trying to figure out why I have wrestling on this thing over here. Uh, <laughs> the wrong account is open. Anyways. Um, and th- thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys have been supporting us over there and uh, get some extra stuff like we're talking about brooms t- t- today. Will be your gold content, <laughs> apparently. They're so, important. Yes, broom talk. We, we, we welcome, broom to call. Welcome to Broomcast, uh, where, where we give you all your broom standing news and technique. So uh, thank you to our friends at the coffee club level, uh, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, and our friends at pghmuseums.org. What is going on over there? I'm make a sundial out of a broom. Sundial out of a broom? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just glanced over and, you're, and you were on Matt Levitin's, like website. I'm like, is the, are you looking up if I'm allowed to build a sundial in my backyard with a broom? <laughs> No, I was trying so because <laughs> I think like I think I'll be in trouble with the burrow at some point for that. How big of a broom sundial can I make? <laughs> <laughs> These questions and more. I wanted I wanted to find no. I wanted to see did, did the criminal does the criminal court keep like a docket record of trials? But I don't think they do. By burrow. By like are, the... we st- are we talking about brooms <laughs> or your other case? No, because I wanted to bring that up today because I my court case was last week. Oh, are we allowed to talk about that? I don't know. And that's why I was like, is it public record? You can if it's by borough. Like I look up Dormont's all the time and stuff like they that. They have the I don't police know. blotter, but I couldn't. But it, my, my thing was dormant but it was so so background if anybody's not aware uh, that may be tuning in um there was a if you go back check out our home automation special uh, around christmas time uh chilla told us about how somebody stole his television from his front porch uh on a ring doorbell and then returned it and then uh, uh you were going through the league yeah, he, so yeah he got he got um community sir a bunch of hours of community service Summary offense can have no police interaction for 90 days. Mm -hmm. Um, So it all worked out. I didn't even have to like go in and give a testimony or anything because he pled guilty. Okay. I think I look back to see what happened because I saw you mention it in the Dormont like website. And it was was on the blotter. It was on the police blotter. What happened? It was on. It made the police blotter. What I was trying to find is do they talk about like what? was handed out who mm. it was mm. that kind of thing but i couldn't so i i don't want to give names or is something. he known <laughs> no i'm sure you can find the he name like a public influencer that really we should all know or something. and now he's like his headshot is his, famous his, his broom fell over <laughs> his his moral broom careful he'll be listening and all of a sudden you have like 10 brooms from amazon on your front porch Jeez. your ring doorbell will go off and there's just brooms <laughs> just line them up on our window up here that could be like the new high school prank like you instead of just ringing the doorbell and running you set up all the brooms and then... <laughs> anyways other than brooms what is your awesome thing of the week guys let's try to do a podcast <laughs> So I got one. So Samsung made an announcement today. Yes, out of San Francisco instead. They didn't go because of the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. M- many, many, many companies are pulling out of the World Mobile Congress, where many mobility companies come and make their announcements. Um, oh, geez, it was like Sony, Samsung, Amazon, mm-hmm. pretty much any company um, or every company was kind of backing out last minute. Um, they announced three Samsung Galaxies, depending on how you spell that, apostrophe S, I, E, S. Galaxy? I's, I, S. Galaxy? And, and we had to add 10 to the number. We went from the S10 to the S20. What, the, that what is that math? Me. What is this math? <laughs> that confused me. Maybe because it's 2020? 
I guess. Now but they're going to line up with the year? The year. Hmm. I that's, guess. That's just okay. going to be... Until they come out with like three in one or two in one year, and then it's going to be whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> so they have the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20... Plus Plus? Ultra, no, Ultra. 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 Okay. Interestingly enough, I've seen plus with the plus sign, and I've also seen it P L U S. So I don't know if they're using it interchangeably, how that's working. But anyway, the primary difference is the inches of screen. Mm -hmm. So the S20 is a 6.2 inch, the S20 Plus is a 6.7 inch, and the 20 Ultra is a 6.9 inch. The memory, this is what surprised me for an and I mean, I know Android kind of goes can go much higher with the, the the memory, and I'm not talking storage here, I'm talking memory. The 20 and the 20 plus have 12 gigs of memory, and the S20 Ultra will have can will come in a 12 or 16 gig variant. Um, the cameras are the other differentiator. Um, the front facing camera is 10, 10, 40 megapixel. Um, 40 being on the, the S20 Ultra. And then the rear camera, there's three, three cameras with a actual time of flight sensor, hmm. which kind of looks like a camera on the plus and the ultra. Um, Pretty interesting device. They are using like the the hole punch in the center of the device for the front facing. Um, they have they call it the Space Zoom Hundred X, which is a hundred X super resolution zoom on the S twenty Ultra. What caught me off guard, and I'm wondering if this is we're going to continue to see prices climb. And now I'm trying to find the section in the article where they talked about it. So um, the S20 starts at $1,000, the 20 plus $1,200, and the Ultra at $1,400. So they didn't make an inexpensive version at all. Mm -hmm. No, but at the same time, a couple months back, they announced the, was it the S10 and S, Ooh. like the S10 Lite and Note S10. Well, doesn't um, Note 10 Lite? Samsung has plenty of mid-range phones right. in general. I mean, the Galaxy is kind of their flagship brand. That's there. So, yeah. I mean, you still have your Cracker Jack box uh, Samsungs that you can get in uh, uh, you have your uh, Boost track Mobile. phone, Boost Mobile that you can throw in a red wagon uh, <laughs> callback. But I think this is going to be the trend this year because even, um, so they leaked that foldable, the foldable. one they, they, the other night. They they put the, the yeah they had a TV advertisement out before they actually did the announcement. Did the announcement of the L two, the yep. L two. It was on during the Oscars, and then what a couple of weeks ago was the Razor during the Grammys, mm -hmm. and the Razor is starting it. Yeah, Motorola mm -hmm. announced that, and then they they put it on hold because of all the pre orders. They couldn't fulfill pre orders. That price is expensive though. It's crazy. Sixty three dollars a month, and I heard it. Broke after twenty seven hundred folds. Yep. Um, what was it? CNET has a folding machine. Mm -hmm. Yes. I understand. That's crazy. Twenty seven thousand and it broke. I, I don't. I don't know if I want a foldable phone. I don't yet. want a foldable phone. Mm -mm. I'm very mm -mm. decided. I want it implanted in my eyeball. Skip ahead. I, I I I do things too quickly, so I don't want the hassle of having to open my phone to make mm -hmm. a tweet. Well, if it gets to the point where it's like a flip open phone, like if it, if you give me a flip open phone that feels like, like the old, the like the old sidekick, it goes, you know, or like the Matrix phones that went like, yeah, and it slid down. Yeah, it slid down. Um, man, that's a fun movie to go back and watch, and they're gonna do another get one. Get it aged. I know they're doing another one. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, I, oh, I, 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 with affordable phones, yeah, we, we, you gotta, you gotta give us some time. Probably by the time <laughs> Apple gets around to it, right? So, uh, Amanda, what's your awesome thing? Um, I am now a fitness tech junkie this week. Okay. So I finally joined the watch club. 
There you go. So um, I am now addicted to closing my rings, pretty mm-hmm. much so. But I found this company um, called um, Jack's Jocks, and they make tech for fitness. So they actually make a kettlebell and a roller that hmm. you that can gauge your workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, the kettlebell is extremely fascinating to me because you can actually adjust the weight on it to go up more. Um, so you can like, based on your workout, you can adjust the, the weight of how much you're lifting on this kettlebell. Hmm. Um, it's and then on equinox. <laughs> the gravitational pull of the kettlebell makes it heavier. Um, but then like the roller thing is pretty cool too, because uh, whenever you do any roller exercise, it kind of will gauge that, um, too, which I'm not too familiar for that. They also have a smart mat which is kind of like a yoga mat, but it's smart. Um, I, I didn't really read is up. That, is that what this guy is doing the kettlebell on here in this yes. video? Yes. Okay. Yes. All so right. I thought that was kind of neato. And then it tracks everything from your workouts to how much weight you lifted and everything right um, through your phone. I, I'm always interested by promo pictures for this because I'm going through when everybody's apartment is, is cleaner than mine, my house. And uh, also, why, why is there just random naked paint make it, uh, mannequin in the background of this photo? <laughs> what is happening? It just kind of stick out, I guess, is somehow. That, is, right? is this the kind of person? Do you have a Do you have a naked paint mannequin in your house? Is that the kind of person that you are? And the guy has like one of the busts, like Batman, like he's gonna flip open the head and hit the red button. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's trading for is to be Batman's sidekick. <laughs> but they also have a hydration bottle, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the hydration bottles are really, really neato. Um, so um, I just saw one the other day that it glows every time it's time for you to take a drink. Mm. Um, and then it tracks it on your phone and on your watch. Like it will alert you when it's time to drink water. Um, and they're pretty neato, um, those hydration and those bottles. Aren't too are ex- huge. They, those aren't mm, like as expensive. They're priced. 15 bucks. Yeah. They're pretty neato. So, yeah, I'm now addicted to fitness tech. Um, while I eat pizza, <laughs> pretty much. So I need that water because I realize I've drank nothing but coffee <laughs> the last <laughs> two days. I live on the you know Starbucks taco and yeah. uh, pizza, but you know, yeah, yet I'm still yeah, like that's... the wearable tech is here to stay. When does the watch just say stop eating that shit? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I want. I want the watch to be like you have it lifted you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have lifted your hand to your mouth. 55 times in the last hour. Please stop eating pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drop mm-hmm. the pizza. <laughs> Please don't cycle. drink that beer anymore. It's a cycle. It's a it's a horrible, <laughs> horrible cycle. And the point is to break that cycle and enforce uh, positive goals. Uh, well, my awesome thing is actually uh, it was brought up last week on the show and I had a chance to actually check it out because uh, I'm like, this thing actually seems like a really good idea for me. And I have internet at home now, so let's do things. Um, so I think, Chilla, you brought up the GeForce Now service that came out of beta, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was from our chat room. Okay. Or, 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 uh, I think we talked. Yeah, it was in the notes last week. So I got to play with it first day. I sound. I signed up for a, a founder's account because <laughs> I figure it is cheaper than buying a whole new computer that can do these things. Um, again, this is a cloud service, so you know. Hopefully, you have like really good internet. We have 100 up and down um, on the uh, on on FiOS at home. And um, my issue with it is it doesn't it doesn't have all my games. Now, this is you you go through and, and you log in with whether it be Steam or your account for Fortnite, or Apex Legends, or um, uh, Battle.net for things like Diablo 3 and, uh, and, and StarCraft. Uh, so, But it's, it's not including everything. Like Everything has to be um, optimized, they're saying, for it. So my Street Fighter V isn't there. My Chikara game that's made by two, like a, a development team of two that I've been following for a while and actually get to meet here meet a couple of times. Um, so... So you're not going to get everything, but the stuff you get is pretty cool. I've been playing Rocket League, and it's the best that I've ever seen it because I don't really play it on my MacBook because that's more for work. Um, and I'm playing this on an i5, uh, I think a fourth generation i5 uh, uh, laptop that plays like old Transformers games good. But I'm starting to choke on like, you know, I can't play um, Rocket League very well or, or or anything beyond that. Like anything anything more than like, like six years old is is kind of you know where where that that fits. Telltale games, I can kind of play Telltale games in Walking Dead, 
Um, but this thing is kind of nice. It actually boots you into an instance chiller. I was actually showing you a little bit of it before the show. You, 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 it opens up Steam, and, but only allows you to open that that Steam game. It's like a, it, it's almost like it launches like its own little virtual machine. Mm-hmm. It's dedicated and pre-configured for that game. Yeah, and I loaded up some Rocket League uh, for you here. First time ever even loading the program uh, on my Mac here at, at, at work um, at the office. And uh, it, 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 it was pretty, I mean, it took a minute. You got to hit install on Steam every time and do an installation every time you want to play your game. But it happens in seconds because it's like obviously cached somewhere on the server. Like this seems like a really viable thing. It seems a little more real than like Stadia doesn't have a free version yet. And then you'd have to buy games in Stadia to use. And I mean, the only other thing that, that I feel like, you know, whatever PlayStation has and Xbox because my brother's been on the Xbox beta and, I, and he talked about a little bit of an awesome cast group, um, you know, th- that will translate all your digital games for Xbox will supposedly be on that platform as well. So I don't I, know. I've tried to join that beta and I didn't get accepted. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't either. Um, I and now the next thing is to grab my uh, old Samsung S6 and see if that will run this GeForce um, setup. So um, it's worthwhile. So if you're like kind of curious about pc gaming because one games seem to be a little cheaper sometimes um see if the game that you want is on this and 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 again it's free like without a credit card you can log in like there's a potential that you may be on a wait list i think um if if the servers are queued or that um uh you're only limited to an hour of play i think paying for it you're limited to six hours of play but let's be honest about that you should probably get you should probably not play more than six hours in a row of a video game um not that we haven't but uh so it, it, i think it's worthwhile it's, it's geforcenow.com if you want to check it out and it's got a lot of really good stuff i, I threw my um and a lot of strange toys. no tomb raider they have uh quake 2 RT, rtx on it which is the the ray tracing technology um they have a couple other examples of games with that they don't have like fallout 4 but they have fallout like 3 and 76 it, it's it's a peculiar kind of lineup here and there so um, look at the games that you're there, or even just get in free and just play some Fortnite and see how it runs, like and see if it works for you. So, and try it on about any kind of hardware too. Like within the past, I don't know, eight years, I think you could try on this thing. So, all right. With that, hey, want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends at Slice on Broadway up here in Beachview, right along the tracks here. Uh, right, right up the road of four locations, Beachview, Carnegie, the East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Please go check them out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you, and they're feeding our uh, crew here for a good long time in our 10-year history of the show. Thank you so much to those guys for supporting us. Um, and uh, check them out. So, Chachi, first of all, did you guys see Chachi's new tattoo? Oh, I have I didn't. They got tattoos for Valentine's Day. And he got an Assassin's Creed Black Flag logo. Wow. Yes. That's dedication. Yes. <laughs> I think I can do that. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm saying that because I'm just now playing Black Flag. Wow. Uh, anyways, he's got a lot of stuff going on there uh, um, over at thegamejourney.com. Um, I know he has been... And part of this is my fault. He's been <laughs> rearranging things a little bit over there. Um, I said to him, because I was like, I remember the archive.org and uh, the the emulated games. And I'm like, hey, man, you should like post if this game is available for people to play over there. Because they you could just like, hey, I'm going to talk about the Sega Genesis game. You know, post it. And it was like, well, I can go in my browser and play that Sega Genesis game for a couple minutes to get the idea. Like, that's great, right? So he's been updating it a little bit, um, and uh, what well, he, he has some notes. He says uh, he he bought it. Well, this is probably not the note for that. He says if you mention on AC, be sure to include at the end uh, of the section uh, the Nintendo 3DS and resources will be available for purchase. Um, so I don't know if he means he's selling his 3DS afterwards, or but he he has gone through. If these games are available, like for instance, he just did Revenge of Shinobi here um and i believe he does have where to buy and you can actually grab a copy of uh oh uh uh-oh we gotta check the links on that one um so that's kind of nice because 
I don't know how many places you can get Revenge of Shinobi, for instance, for the Genesis. Uh, so he's helping kind of connect that as well. Hmm. So um, go check itself out at uh, thegamejourney.com. All right, let's look into what everybody had in the awesome cast group. Uh, well, let's see. Potter was sharing about the uh, Galaxy S20. We already touched base on that. Um, and uh, so this was one... There's some updates to the X Prize. Um, we and and I love the uh, the the AI prize, uh, the artificial intelligence. I actually was there for the um, kickoff for that, and now I have to whitelist the Post Gazette. Give me a moment for that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but in the running for the top prize are two Pittsburgh companies in the running uh, with facial technology and trash bots. I have not seen these trash bots yet. There was just an interesting conversation the other day about trash bots at at my work, mm-hmm. where we were talking about if the dog's tail like sets off the dog the trash sensor, so that your Ooh. trash can just keeps opening and closing every time the dog walks by. Oh, this is a real thing. Yeah, like you can buy censored trash cans, like oh, that, that you walk sense. over and like wave your hand over it, and the trash can pops open. So you don't have to touch anything, right? Um, there's also like home automation apps for it and stuff like that. Uh, I think it would be funny if it would alert you when it's full. Like, take me out! Um, or like, hey, it's Friday. It's time to take me to the curb. But um, we are discussing it. Like, how sensitive is it? Like, can the dog's tail set it off? Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> because those homes that have dogs, like, <clears throat> they would just be so, like, the dog would just walk by and the trash can would pop open. It would and, just wear out. And guess what? That's where the dog's, like, going to have dessert. Because <laughs> so if you it, don't have a good dog, that's what happens is the dog goes for the trash can. <laughs> the dog's going to figure it out. So the companies um, included for, for the uh, represented <clears throat> in the in the XPRIZE uh, this time, uh, Northside-based Marinus Analytics, which uses software and facial recognition tools to help law enforcement Officials identify sex trafficking victims, and, and the next thing will not be nearly as important. Uh, Clean Robotics, a startup in Point Breeze that uses artificial intelligence to sort trash to help promote proper recycling. That one is, yeah, I could deal with yeah, that so one. Where, yeah. so That's where are actually they, cool. So, so they said they're used in Pittsburgh, Colorado, and North Carolina, San Francisco, and Australia. Mm-hmm. So do they, do they have pictures of them? Of the, the robots. Trash bots. The trash. The robots. I do want to. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see a picture. Oh wait, here's. Yeah. I don't know if this is. A... I think it's more of a sorting machine. It's a sorting machine. Yeah, it's, it, it, hmm. it, it gets to the recycling center, and it's kind of just a a, a machine they're applying a, AI to it. Uh, here, they're cleanrobotics.com is the site. I think um, that's smart. Not to downplay uh, sex trafficking uh, help, right? No, not at all. <laughs> um, oh, so it's actually, so this is actually a bin. Wait, I think I've seen a version of this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I feel like this was a pitch at a startup weekend that I've been to. This seems very familiar to me, actually. <laughs> so I'd be curious to see if the same people like, like actually started this at a startup weekend. Which, and, and by the way, um, a friend of the show that's been on here, Kenny Chen, is involved with the X Prize Foundation and the Pittsburgh chapter of it. And uh, and I believe also behind one of the people behind the Pittsburgh startup weekends. So it all comes together. Mm. So go check that out. It's just good to hear some uh, good team or good Pittsburgh companies are uh, getting getting a. Uh, I am interested in how they're going to do the sex trafficking mm-hmm. AI type of thing. But it's the facial like, recognition. I think it's just kind of picking up on cameras, cameras right? like all over Southside now because that's the biggest one that you're hearing about right now. Oh, really? Southside. Yeah, apparently they're going around playing sounds of like children crying or like a woman screaming, and so when you come out of your home to investigate, they grab you. Wow. Yeah, really? it's been all over. It's been. Um, reported a few places on online that that's how they're getting people now um they've reported all over south side a few places in north side so Jeez. um i'd be interested on in if they're going to do something like uh, obviously south side all those businesses most of them have cameras mm-hmm. pointed mm-hmm. outside that can absolutely record who goes in and out of all those bars and restaurants mm-hmm. so that's definitely something but they're doing it more towards people's residential homes now. Um, that that's the scariest thing. 
yeah, I'll be interested to see how that works out, especially as there's the discussion about facial recognition and and kind of a rules coming down about where they can do it. Like San Francisco has recently banned it, at least AI facial recognition and just, you know, the, like that application. Also, uh, Brian sent us, uh, Brian Spansky sent us in the group because, uh, you know, that couch you guys are sitting on over there. You know, they, we we brought that up the street from the old studio, and so uh, he was he was kind of uh, uh, brought back to the day uh, with these guys that are <laughs> moving a broken down sofa. I don't know where, and uh, in and it looks like they're having some trouble there. So they're they're awkwardly balancing it on a mm-hmm. forklift or uh, on a, yeah on a, a dolly. Why is it dolly. upside down? It's upside down on the because because you got to hold the dolly. Jeez. We didn't even use a dolly. We just lifted that damn thing with like two people huh. and carried it up the street and then stopped for ice cream when the ice cream guy came by. That's funny. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, wait. He lost the pillow. He's getting the pillow. Oh, Sorry. God. The other guy's got it. We're good. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, for sharing that. Uh, anyways. Hey, we do a lot of stuff around here. Actually, had a lot, last week, we had a lot of fun. I, I was saying before the show, I know far more about LIDARs in automated cars than I probably should know. Well, I was going to say useless information, but the people that were learning it will actually do something with that with an AI-powered car. Uh, but uh, well, that's one of the things that we were working with, uh, capturing some skill shops as part of Sidekick Media Services, sidekickmediaservices.com. Well, we do podcasting on here, but also lives out of here at Circuitron Media Studio, uh, and uh, we do a lot of stuff with our clients, and uh, we can help you with your next big project to be a a sidekick to your superhero project learn more about uh, video production podcasting and uh, websites social media so much more sidekickmediaservices.com all right so chilla you got a couple of things here down at the bottom right down at the bottom <laughs> oh. so the, the one that i found interesting so logitech mm-hmm. came out with a new camera and what caught what originally caught my eye was it it was USB C, and I'm like, hmm. there, there, it doesn't seem like there's enough USB C, and we have all these dongles converting. Yeah, just um, add, just yeah. ask Aaron. He doesn't know what to do with all those ports. Yes, but what what really caught my eye on this one is it's the stream cam, so it's targeted at streamers for like YouTube and Twitch. Okay. To come in at a lower price point than their Brio camera, that's a two hundred dollar. This is like a hundred. It's still one hundred and seventy. But what really caught my eye was it'll film in portrait mode, like in the like you know how everything's landscape. Mm-hmm. This will do like vertical, vertical. So if you so like, I can TikTok, so you can TikTok, so I can TikTok because I've been TikToking lately. You know. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I mean, I, well, as of last night, I've been TikTok. Or, or you could do all your videos for your Snapchats mm-hmm. or what, whatever vertical video you want to do. Um, this will will do it. I, it was nice, too, because I have a couple of webcams that I wish had a tripod mount. This has, you know, the standard clip on your monitor. It can attach to a tripod. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of the the higher, end, the higher end Logitechs always seem to have a, a tripod, standard tripod mount on it. So like we, I've seen it like the sixty dollar and up mm-hmm. with them in the past years, like the old uh, nine ten nine twenties um, that we used to pick up first. I have like an older, I think it was nine. It was an early model of a nine twenty or nine thirty, mm-hmm. and it. I was surprised it doesn't have a tripod. Really? Mount. Yeah. Because mm. I thought it didn't. I took it to work for to hand to someone to put on a tripod, and they're like, "There's no mount on the bottom of this." Mm. I'm like, "Oops, sorry." Well, that's a nice thing, but I, I thought it was I thought it was interesting, um, an interesting device. Like I said, it's default USB C comes with a couple of dongles, so if you don't have a newer laptop or desktop, desktops even have USB C. I don't. I haven't seen a desktop. I've, I haven't seen a new one in a while, so yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, my awesome thing, or not yeah, not my awesome thing. My my other cool thing is, um, have you guys checked out Mythic Quest on Apple TV Plus? Yes, yes, yes. all of it. Oh, jeez! <laughs> I finished it last night. I actually binged it all last night. We just got through episode five, the flashback episode. Yeah, though that is it, something. it gets real sentimental. After it does. That, I will tell you that. Yeah, I bet it does. It got the whole like underlying story under mm-hmm. 
after that episode. How many episodes are there? It's nine. Nine, nine. nine half hour episodes. It is almost certainly it, it it's got that Silicon Valley vibe with a little tinge of always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> so it has a lot of the creators are involved mm-hmm. in it, of course. But uh it's uh it, it's it's been fun so far. But it, the cool thing about it, and we're watching this thing, and again, just just playing a lot of Assassin's Creed my wife and I lately, um, they, they cop a lot of things. Like literally in a transition scene, you see a character that doesn't look like an assassin do the jump with the eagle scream off of a building. And we're just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I and know where they got that from. And there, there's a bunch of stuff they got. So apparently as part of this, other the show is really good. I, I, I really enjoy the show. And then we've been like trying to find uh, time to watch it uh, over the last couple of days, actually. But uh, Ubisoft actually was involved in creating a fake game for Mythic Quest. So when you do when they do their in-game um, stuff here, like it is an actual game that they built, at least enough that they can do, you know, whatever they need to do for the story. And it's an MMO game is is a story. This Mythic Quest game, uh, Raven's Banquet, is the expansion pack that they just released at the beginning of the series. Which, and I don't know, again, not going through the rest of the series, I feel like every season is going to be a new expansion pack. I feel like they're missing the a huge point of, like, they could do so much more with the, like, um, the retail end of this. Mm-hmm. Like, I completely want a t-shirt that says, like, Poppy is my queen or something like that. <laughs> like, something with, like, Poppy just screaming, like, Ian. Just, mm-hmm. like... Uh, just something like they need to do more with the whole retail of it because there's so much they're missing well, that it, there are so many like one liners. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So much great. Even the soundtrack music they pick is great. Oh, yeah. Um, They did the the whole one, the background story of the writer behind it. And they like played Pink Floyd in the entire like episode. I was like, yes, like it was great. I just feel like they're missing there, there could be more. Well, to this is the first thing. This is the first thing that I, I watched that feels like, oh, because it, it seemed like it came out of nowhere. Now, when I look back, like apparently there was like a preview or something back at like E3, but I didn't feel like it really told you much about it. it looked like a game trailer mostly, right? Right. Um. So it, it, I, I discovered it like maybe early to mid January, and then it dropped like last week, and I didn't know about it, right? Um, but this feels like that random epi- that random show that I'm going to find in Netflix and binge through. And also, they bin- they did a binge. They didn't binge a lot of those first. They didn't drop the entire thing of those first few seasons on Apple TV Plus. No, even Disney Plus didn't. Even Disney Plus right. hasn't been doing that. Yeah. So that right. like the morning show, you had to do it every Friday. Mm-hmm. Serving, you had to do every Friday. We waited till it was all out, and we just binged through. It. Right. So I mean, you could do that too. I usually waited three, but or this, four episodes. This, yeah, yeah, at least like in yeah. a chunk, right? So it, it was, it was, it was like that was different for them. Um, Snoopy, they dropped all of Snoopy at once. That's true. Yeah, but it's also like forty minutes total. Um, <laughs> all great but anyways um so so it it feels like you know this is the first time they've had something like this and it feels like it's kind of taken off so who knows what they'll do with it like are we gonna see raven's banquet shirts in apple stores or something well they barely have any any clothing retail there so i hope it doesn't go that far but i hope at some point somebody allow some type of licensing for it because i would like i'd really like like some animated shirt of like poppy just screaming at Ryan, you know or something or like or like a pooty thing some type of pooty joke the uh yeah the uh the, the twitch streamer is uh was a pooty pie pooty pie pooty pie mm-hmm. and 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 he gives uh uh out of five buttholes i think it is <laughs> is it actually do they refer to it as twitch or is it some other i know they just say streamers uh, yeah they just they're, say they're streamers. streamers the part i've been so far they go to a streamer con uh looking for streamers mm-hmm. to because that's basically like a streamer likes your game that's what makes it mm-hmm. kind of situation right. like when they sit around they don't watch like the numbers of revenue they watch what the streamers say like they'll all gather in the conference room and they'll be like mm-hmm. okay the streamers are viewing the game play and then there's like they're all gathered in the conference room, like watching mm-hmm. what he gives, and, and it's and the, weird. And the kid's like fourteen year old years old, and has that like a little bit of that Will Ferrell mom, you know, moment. Uh, you know, <laughs> like my mom, she's a great employee. <laughs> yeah. so. 
there's a lot of spoilers, but it, I won't say anything. But I finished it. And it's it's pretty outstanding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty outstanding. But I hope they do more with it. I really do. Uh, season two was already announced last month. Yay! So yay, <laughs> yay! Pre, pre, like, I hope they make more. Oh wait, they announced it like two weeks ago. Okay. <laughs> yay! All right. I feel like um, which is great because I feel like Apple TV Plus became the contender with mm-hmm. everything with mm-hmm. these like few shows that everybody is talking about and now there's a beastie boys documentary coming in a few weeks yeah, yeah. there's supposed to be huge i feel bad because i want to tell chachi about it but he's an android guy i think he knows about it but he said he's not going to watch it because it's because it's, apple. it's apple right right well he's just going to want to eventually but if you like if you have any kind of modern smart tv i mean there's plenty of places to get the apple content right there is. Sorry, you just got to pay for it. Sorry, or get your month for sorry, free, Chachi. watch that one thing, and then cancel it. Chachi, just, just, I'll put you on my family plan. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> go in. I wonder if it would work. If you go into the Apple Store and log in with your iTunes account, does it pop up a prompt for a free year? Wait, will you log like into like inside a system store? device? Let's not talk about hacking the Apple Store on live on the, the internet. The store has already become the after school library. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't. Yeah, so we've had a round of, I'll I'll just give it away that I work, um, (laughs) where I work now. Um, So we've had, um, for the last few weeks, about five teenagers, they're probably about 12 or 13, come to the store and play video games around the iMac table. So they take up two laptops and the entire iMac table. It, it, no, no, it doesn't become library. It's on. become the, the arcade. arcade. It's become the arcade. Huh. And this, I this... literally looked at my boss the first day and I said, somebody needs to pull down the marketing person from Simon Mall and tell them that the new rebuild needs to have an arcade. Mm-hmm. No, n- this is the next Apple commercial for Apple Arcade like, right yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't even playing Apple Arcade, but at the same time, like they were playing something on stream or on Steam. They all logged into their like to this website. They were playing some shoot 'em up game that looked like Minecraft. Like it was all blocks, but they were just a one person shooter. I have no idea. I just thought it was hilarious because they all put their headphones on and plugged them in the back of the IMAX and then just sat there. And they brought what? in, they literally what? brought in, they brought in a case of Mountain Dew and three bags of Doritos. What? Wait, Andy, you guys, and there's this, like, you won't do it? Like, just, like. And we totally went in the back and got them extra mice because some really? of the IMAX had, like, track pads. So they got extra mice so the kids could play. And they stayed there for probably about a good hour. Just wow. playing. Wow. And we just, like, we're like, okay, cool, whatever. Like. Like they weren't disturbing anybody or anything. We also have a guy that comes in literally every single day and plays music on the IMAX and stuff like that. Like if you watch like long enough, if you come in the store enough, you see these regular characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but these kids, it was hilarious. They came in like case of Mountain Dew, like bags of Doritos. I'd be worried about started, like, Dorito gaming. dust on my keyboard. Um, and they just start gaming, like just hmm. sitting there playing video games, and we're like. This is hilarious. Like this tells the mall there needs to be an arcade again. Oh yeah. Some type of arcade. Like poor They're... looking for group is so far away, but yeah, yet yeah. they need something like that in a mm-hmm. mall setting for these kids. That's like a pay by the hour or something that's not too expensive. And just set up yeah. a bunch of couches, a couple TVs. Like take the almost the looking for group like thing and put it in a mall setting and it would be like unbelievable. On a Friday night, that place is packed. Wow, really? Packed with teenagers with nothing to do. That's crazy. It's it's reverted back to the 90s. The mall, like, is reverted back to the 90s. And for those that say that Macs aren't for gaming, <laughs> those kids are proving it. Pretty much. And what it's on it, so it's a browser game, so it's something they can, it's, they'll play it's on Safari. It's something that they're doing on Safari and just loading <laughs> it up, and they're playing each other. Wow. Like the, like the one dude, the one kid stood up and he's like, I just took you out. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, Meanwhile, people are like checking, like looking at Apple watches and, and right. whatnot around Like them. they're just trying to shop and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm in an appointment trying to explain to a person. Something. But it's not like, like overly disruptive. They're they're keeping it themselves and doing a thing. And, nope. and it's probably great for people to see here are these kids gaming on a Mac. But it literally just shows that like. It, there needs to be arcades and stuff again wow. in malls because it's it's happening. Mm-hmm. Like it's it, that's where they want to be. think that gaming is an antisocial platform, right? Mm-hmm. That became social. Absolutely, online it, gaming. It's kind of come back around, hasn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, with so much opportunity or 
right. or, you know, just like anything internet, like, you know, you can be one way or the other with it. So, all right. So speaking of the gaming, here's, here's, here's one that I liked. Um, I did not have a Game Boy in the, in the era of the, uh, the photo printer on the Game Boy. Know what I'm talking about here? I think I got rid of mine before the photo printer became okay. like the cool thing. It was like the Game Boy Color area, right? Mm-hmm. So I saw this actually on LinkedIn. Um, David Kelly on LinkedIn actually has he he took a Game Boy with the Game Boy web camera type thing. I know this is the opposite of your uh, your uh, TikTok camera you were just talking about from Logitech, uh, Chilla. But he he mounted a ready to go printer. The, the 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 Game Boy printer. You could get a printer that that printed out dot matrix uh, images for you, and he he turned it into a nice little picture frame thing, uh, so you're good to go. Build a pocket photo booth that will uh, hang on the wall like a picture frame um, with the eight foot photos. So I don't know, kind of a nice throwback there, and and again, kind of staying on that uh, gaming idea. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Um, Ford. Ford has a, de- a jacket for when you go biking, Chilla. They have a jacket for me to what? Go biking? Go biking. For you to go biking. So that you can put an emoji. A, a, oh, I saw this. A, it's a, is it a jacket or a backpack? No, it's a, it's a jacket. This looked pretty. With like, LEDs on the back and you can put a little emoji back there. Yeah, I don't, I don't need and to I know go you're gonna put, to this. I know you're going to do a poop emoji. I'd do a middle finger emoji. Are you there kidding you me? Especially there if I was in go. New York City. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I London. Mean, that's that's London. It's the emoji jacket helps people. Oh, that is London. There's a double jacket. Helps that's people to share the logo. road mm-hmm. here. Um, so can you change it like uh, with your Apple Watch? Like, I want to be able to like change the emoji. No, it's from Ford. My so somewhere so far, I'm just seeing faces. Uh, I don't know. Okay, they do. It looks like a couple faces so far. I've seen um, I've seen backpacks where there's like a oh there's a uh, there's a, a hazard exclamation and then a smiley face. There you go. I just would want like the turn signal arrows. Yeah, there it there is. There you there go. It is. Those yes. Are turn signals. Yes. A happy face and a sad face. I don't know where that all fits in. Because they're starting um, to put the turn signals on the helmets, so I'd like to see that on the. Jacket. Can we get is Bike yeah. Pittsburgh on top of this one? Because uh, <laughs> I'd love to see these around town. That would be awesome. But, I mean, it, obviously, it's probably, like, an early thing that they're just um, kind of rolling out uh, in general. You know. will, will this tech bring back, like, ASCII art where, like, we're doing <laughs> pixel by pixel? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. I'd like to see that art show in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Pixel art. Can, Somebody get a that. million dollar idea. Yeah, they can. So, yeah. The, yeah, they can use it to display turn signals or a hazard symbol. They can use it to indicate their general mood. I am a mad biker. Leave me alone, apparently. Uh, so, I, however it's that like works. It's like a in. car hits them. It just gets to like frowny face. Like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> Absolutely. In an emergency, calls 911. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Does this thing your, have... Your jacket now just called 911. Does my jacket have reception to get help? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, let's yeah. see GM it was actually uh, this, this was mentioned because I, I know this was in the news I actually put this in the in the group and then went to the event where GM was there talking about Super Cruise <laughs> so um, but no they're going to be putting Super Cruise which is that uh, quasi AI like level 3 I believe um, cruise control uh, in 22 of their 2023 vehicles coming up so that is and I, I think they had or somebody else had a, had a list of who's all getting this kind of whatever that company's version of super cruise is is uh all the top 10 uh best-selling models are all getting this technology in it moving forward so that's kind of interesting to see so so that means in another 10 years when i'm buying a used car i'll have super cruise Realistically, yeah, I was just thinking realistically, I'm like, hey, I'm a, we all learn you got to watch yourself. If you're going to buy that used Tesla this week when uh, the guy bought a, a, a certified used had a sheet, a features list from Tesla was a certified Tesla used car. Apparently huh. had the all the upgrades, right? Like the like the what is what is there is called auto a pilot or something, right? Got a software update and they took away the autopilot. 
because something crossed over and they said actually you like you or the user before you didn't actually pay for this upgrade and they actually downgraded. So whether this is a Tesla communication error or what, but it's kind of a question mark on, you know, you got to watch when there's those software upgradable cars. I just, I just think giggling as like a, a, a technician, like how many times do you tell a person to plug in their car to update their firmware or software? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I ha- is it a plug in? <laughs> or what happens? Is it, know, a, like, is it an oversell? Like, or like what happens if that satellite all of a sudden malfunctions one night or your fo- or your car's not set to receive the reception of the satellite all of a sudden your gps is showing like asia instead of united states but and my fear is what happens when like 5 or how many years do they support that for and they right. then like mm-hmm. there's and some the bug and they're the like yeah we're not work. we're no longer issuing Listen, firmware man. updates for that your car, uh, it's seven I, years old. I don't know if you're going to be driving a uh, 2017 Tesla in 20 years. I, I no, just I'm don't not even think saying in 20. Happening. What happens if, like, in, in like five, they mm-hmm. decide, hey, hey we're your seeing hardware it. no longer supports this software. We're seeing this yeah. with smart uh, smart objects, right? I even thought about that. I'm like, how long are those um, LED bulbs rated for? And I bought a Sylvania Wi Fi bulb. What happens when that thing stops being supported? I mean, I guess I just have a light bulb in the end. Yeah, I guess I never thought about that because they say like the actual bulb lasts fifteen years, but does the technology, yeah, the technology the bulb yeah, will yeah. be written into every single operating system from mm-hmm. here on for the next fifteen? Now years. it has its own app, and will Sylvania keep updating the app? And right. then you know, we'll do, I haven't even looked at from the do home things and the, that bulb. I haven't looked in what do I need to do to update these things if need be. Philips, it's kind of easy because Philips will give you an alert when it's time to update it. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you go in the Philips app and just hit update. And, and the wise cam, the bit, wise but... cameras do the same thing. If I go into the app to look at something, right. it'll, it'll let me know. Hey, this camera could use an update, and 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 go ahead and do that. I, think I open the app like so, once a month for <laughs> for Philips. For Philips, okay. yeah. I don't ever because I run it all off a of home kit, so mm-hmm. I don't really ever open that app. I have not opened the Do Home, whatever that's called, in the Sylvania yeah. apps since I've installed them. And it's been what the last two months relatively. Well, who was it that I just had to? Oh, it was. Was it Ring? Ring. I had to remove and re-add it to all my Amazon stuff because of some mm-hmm. hack or whatever. Well, and, Wise did the same thing. They logged everybody out and all their tokens. Yep. So all huh. my if this and that I just set up like two days before went away. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> screw this. <laughs> so, so I mean, but this is all those growing pains in those kinds of things. Um, Chilla, you had one last story in here. Let's touch on that before we get out of here. So I thought it was interesting. Um, Apple is joining the Fido Fido Alliance. Yeah, I've heard of Fido. Fido Net, um, which the Fido Alliance believes that we should be getting rid of user ID and password, um, and use trusted device. If you think of the way, um, when you log into an Apple device, it tosses a one-time passcode to another trusted device it's kind of like that except for this is going to work cross devices cross platform cross websites etc etc you would register a trusted device and when you type in your user id you would then get a prompt and see this is i really like how this would work you would get a prompt on the device that would say, do you want to authorize this login? Yes or no. Hmm. Um, so I think it's a great concept. I'm interested to see how we bridge the gap of, I don't have a device that's that can use this or my device died. How do I authenticate to anything? Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's a great so, idea. I mean, this was an extension of like um, when I log into a computer and I have my watch, it'll do, it'll log in. Like, it, is it that kind of technology that we're talking about here? And it's like, more like you got finger? close to your computer and the watch would prompt you and say, "Do you yes. want to log in?" Which I actually have seen that because I've noticed the um, when when I'm making a change in system um, system settings. And it has has the you know the thing will prompt to do a password or a fingerprint, but my watch will also buzz and it says double click the button to also authorize. Mm-hmm. So, and I like this because the your watch 
is tied to your user ID. Mm -hmm. It has the pin on it, but then mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't leave your wrist. It is literally sitting there listening automatic. to your heartbeat. If it's not a biometric, mm -hmm. you know, that knows it's you, you know, by by all accounts, then, you know, that that makes a lot of sense. I think it's one just one step closer to security. Like mm -hmm. we're all talking about data privacy anymore and like mm -hmm. But really, passwords have become kind of this snafu thing where um, you can now like log in with Apple. It has ha hopefully yeah. in the next few years it'll catch on just as much as login with your Facebook is because I'm really tired of logging in with my Facebook whenever I do an app, mm -hmm. like a new app. I try to not do it. I try to do either Google or I sign up with my email just because I don't want so many things connected to my Facebook just because Facebook's icky to me. With their security, um, I that was the first thing I did when I got my watch was set it up that my it would unlock my Mac mm -hmm. the second I opened it. Oh yeah, um, it's it's such a great feature. Such and you, a cool feature. And the fact that we have two Macs with my accounts on them on that table, and Missy will go do some DVD work on the other older Mac, and then I'll just feel buzz, and she just got into the computer without logging in. <laughs> so it's right. always kind of like okay. I just think this is one step closer to data privacy and security, like. Mm -hmm. there's only so many times i i checked it the other day my passwords and accounts under your user settings on ios you can see how many you've ch saved in keychain um i have uh, almost 300 passwords saved through ios keychain jeez that's insanity to me and then my one password probably has about 50 in it see i because i would get but, I, i'm not keeping up on both of them so i right. i'm stopping the keychain i'm trying to cut it off so everything goes through LastPass. I'm just, but I'm trying to, like, I would rather be my fingerprint. I would rather it be some type of authentication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or send a code to my watch and then I type my code in or something else other than the same five passwords just with different combinations because that's what everybody does. And there's there's passwords that I have, I've actually used, like, the use strong password and I don't even know what the password is or oh, what it is it my mortgage? One of them, like you have to store a cookie on your machine. And if you, if you go to a new machine, I have to type in a bunch of stuff from like my mortgage information. That's on a piece of paper at home. What's so if I'm like on the road and I'm like, Oh, I want to pay my mortgage right now. Yeah. I, I have yeah. to go. I there's only like two devices I can go to to pay to actually. I've still a bill from. I've still not been able to authorize my computer at home to log into Patreon on either account to do that. I literally remote into the studio <laughs> to do the Patreon post tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that aside, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, Bull Pittsburgh, what's going on? What's coming up? What should people be checking out? Oh, my God. This week, we're releasing our 10 hottest dates in Pittsburgh. So if you are struggling where to find a date this week, um, I have 10 suggestions um, of fun things to do out of the box thinking of those perfect dates. Are you telling me I shouldn't just take her to Sonic the Hedgehog this weekend? Yes, because that's so you. Don't buy her a broom. <laughs> Don't buy her a broom. Don't buy her broom. No offense. <laughs> um, the coolest one that I just wrote about was called Carnegie Frick and Commerce. Mm -hmm. So it's the Carnegie Museum of Natural Art and History and the Art Museum, um, the Frick Cafe for lunch, and Commerce Bar for drinks afterwards. So it's very oh. historical dating. That one will probably go up tonight or tomorrow. Um, just in time for Valentine's Day. And of course, go see Little Shop of Horrors. Um, literally the best show I've seen in really? a very long time at Pittsburgh Public Theater. Um, so much fun. They actually build an Audrey 2 that's like life size. It's probably like six foot tall. Really? Uh, it might be more like 10 foot tall. And it actually takes a puppeteer and a voice person to work it. Um, and literally it does eat people like in the end, scenes, nice. like the people crawl into it and it like spoiler, chops down and spoiler eats it, alert. But it's really neat. Oh, um, yeah, that's, uh, and, and of course my Kickstarter got launched too. Yes. Two weeks ago for building a plus size clothing store here in Pittsburgh. So Fantastic. check out sinuosity, um, pgh.com. Um, it's all to help build a um, plus size boutique in Pittsburgh. 
Go check it out. We'll have links in the uh, in the show notes. Chilla on the Twitter. Chill on the Twitter. John's chill on the Facebook. Chillatech.net. I am not your broom on TikTok. <laughs> Not chilla with a hacksaw. Not chill. I'm 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 gonna create a TikTok that's, a week. That's a. <laughs> I'm gonna see how many TikTok accounts. I uh, can have. your bite account will be chilla with a hacksaw. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Sorgatron everywhere, including TikTok. Apparently, where I'm throwing some stuff on there, seeing if I can hang with the TikToks. Like I know people on there with like three thousand followers. I'm like, how? How? How did you do this? Uh, so it was kind of fun to go check that out. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, producer Missy, for keeping everything in line. She's been very quiet this episode, too. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.